The task at hand is to model a coiled cable, something like this. I'll be modeling the rest of this another time, but right now we're gonna do the coiled cable, but I think we'll make the cable just come straight down for now and to have a texture, something like this. I'll give you two, two different versions of this and you can put whatever material uh, you want on it. All right, so this is what we're gonna do in Blender. We're gonna start by adding a cylinder. And this is gonna make up our actual cable. Um, let's put this at 16 vertices and nothing and come in here and scale this shift Z so not in the Z. So I'll do that and now I'll scale it in the Z. We'll do that and then we're going to add some edge loops. Something like this so I get these rectangles uh, nice and even so that it's got some geometry uh, in order to bend. I'll shade smooth as well and then we'll add an array and that's going to create the length of our cable. We'll add one in the Z and zero out the X and don't forget to click on Emerge. So we have two of them there and I'll set this to something like 15. Okay, now for the spiral part. I'm going to bring in a plane right there. Go into edit mode. I'm going to delete those two vertices and I'm going to press S to scale and we'll just leave those there for now. We'll be getting rid of one in a moment. Go back into object mode and on this we're going to add the screw modifier. We're going to leave it here in the Z and I'm just going to start holding shift and pulling this and you can see it's starting to come up if I increase the iterations start getting that I'm going to come in here now and I'm going to take this point and I'll delete it it doesn't matter which one you delete it so we have this if I want to change the diameter of this I just push it in towards the red line here the X line and that'll change the diameter so we'll do something like this all this can be changed uh, later on and I'll just increase or decrease the size, increase the iterations, something like this. We're going to convert this now to a curve. All right, so you do have to be pretty sure that that's the general number of turns that you want. Let's go ahead and convert this to a curve. And now come over here, put on a curve modifier, and select that. I'm going to change that to Z. And you can see our object is like this. I can come back to this and I can scale this in the Z and I can separate it out a little bit. I can still come in here, go into edit mode and scale shift Z to make it narrower. And we have this. Come back to the curve, scale it in the Z. All right, now I can take this and I can push it or pull it down I can increase the array as well. So we have this. Let's also make it so that it comes down to the ground. So let's look from the front view, select everything, and let's rotate Y90 and just move it like this so it looks a little bit more convincing. I'm going to take this, I'm just gonna hide that for the moment. Let's look at this curve and see how we can get this to work. I think what I'll do is I'll take this point Control plus a few times. I'm gonna go ahead and let's keep maybe that point. Let's get rid of those ones. We'll take this point now, I'll look from the side, and I will extrude it down. Like it so it comes down. I can take this point if I want and just move it in between in between these points. And if I really wanted to, I could, I could subdivide this, take this point, look from the side, and just pull it back out to match. All right, so you can, you can uh, manipulate these points so that you get a nicer curve. Okay, let's Alt H and bring that back, and you can see we have this. I'm going to scale it in the X and squeeze it in a little bit more. All right, so we are able to continue to add or remove segments from this. We can still change the diameter of this. Now we're in the X, scale shift X. I can make it thinner. All right, so let's say we're happy with that. I'm not gonna apply anything. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to hide that. I'm gonna come back to the array and I'm gonna change it to something like three for the moment. 
let's come in now and let's go underneath here and in edge selection shift alt and click that under side edge control e and mark seam i'm going to select it all i'm going to go into the uv editing and with that selected i'm going to press u unwrap and i'll get a nice unwrap like this i can take this and i can pack it although it's pretty much done this is what i'm going to export to substance painter so i'm going to create an fbx and bring it into substance painter so here is the piece in substance painter the next thing i need to do is to make the mesh map so let's do that i'll do this at 2k and i'll uncheck id it's baked and we are ready to go let's delete that layer and then you can put on any material you want i'm thinking of starting with a rubber material this is a smart material this plastic rubber so I'll put that on we have good resolution on this because we uh, used a lot of the UV space for just a little piece of this with that done it's time to put our first pattern on so go to fill properties I'll click height we only want height bring it to the max add a black mask right click add a fill and go to the properties so that you can see the grayscale. Come over to procedurals and type gradient or start typing it. And I'm gonna choose this one here. The horizontal um, patterns work well for this. And we don't really have a problem with the seam. I'm gonna drag this onto the grayscale. Don't see anything yet, but start bringing up the contrast. I'll bring it to about halfway and start increasing the tiling. All right, I'll bring that to about eight. All right, and now we start seeing something. Let's play with the balance a little bit. But first, let's come up here to rotation and change this to 90. Now you can see this. Now if I play with the balance, I start to get this effect. All right, and that's really all that I need. You can have more or less of these, and we shouldn't have a problem with the seam for this so you can do whatever you know other material type things you want to do on this i'm going to start with this so let's come over here and let's call this coiled cable video that's the material we're going to export this texture so I come over here the output template, I'm gonna choose PBR Metallic Roughness. And when I look at this, I see that my normal is DirectX, but I'm using Blender. So I'm gonna take this, and drag that in there, and choose RGB channels. I've got height, that looks fine. I don't really need a missive or anything, but that's just part of the template, so I'll leave it. So that's PBR Metallic Roughness. Go back to the settings, change this to PBR Metallic Roughness, Choose an output directory. And I'm just going to export this as PNG 8 bits. That's fine. Okay, click export. And you will see these are the maps. Okay. All right, let's go back over to Blender. Go to the shading tab. I've got my, my cable selected without the modifiers really affecting them right now, or just three on the array. I'm gonna click new. I'll give it a material name. I'll call it coil cable video. And with the principal BSDF selected and the node wrangler enabled, shift control T and select all of these. Principal texture setup, layout, Click here we can see the texture on there let's go back now to use I don't know how many of these I needed but we'll just experiment turn on this and you can see we have a texture on there let's try this just to get a different lighting all right um, if you wanted to you can add a subdivision to this if necessary don't have to all right and it becomes even smoother just 
just to show you in different lightings. Try that. I can still take this and I can scale in the X to pull those in. All right. I can scale shift X to change the diameter. So I can still do all of that editing stuff. And then once I'm satisfied, I can go ahead and apply these. Let's come back now to Substance Painter and have a look at the other, the other uh, texture. All right, I'm going to remove that. I'm going to add a fill again, come to the properties, the grayscale, procedurals, and I'm going to do stripe. Now this one is a little bit more finicky to get this on here. First, it may look okay, but if we start to look carefully at this, you will see we have an issue here, all right, where the seam is causing a problem. And what we're going to need to do is come down into here and I'm going to leave that at 10. I can play with the softness and you can adjust the width. I'm going to bring the width up. I'm looking at this groove here. All right. I want that groove. And we could potentially have a problem where this, where one segment starts and the next one does and also right here. And the way that you deal with that is a combination of this shift and rotate up here so i'm going to play around a little bit see it's getting a little bit better now that may look good but we may still have a problem right here all right because we have we arrayed this three times i have one two you can see it there as well so like i say you're going to have to play with the shift and the rotate until you can get it uh, to work sometimes the width a little bit but it's mostly the rotate and you get it as close as you can yeah it's zero there so let's see how that other part yeah now we have this And you'll eventually get a position where it looks pretty darn good. All right, that's not bad right there. Let's try that, but let's try just a different material here. Let's come into materials or smart materials, whatever you've got. I'm gonna look up plastic. We'll try that thermal plastic. That's very shiny. Let's see what that looks like. All right, let's leave it like that. We'll just overwrite what we had, export textures. We have the same texture set up. So let's just go ahead and export that. And then we'll come back over here. And with this stuff still selected, I'll delete it. Shift control T and we'll reload these. And we will change the lighting here. Um, I'll just go back to something basic to have a look at this. So now we have that. And you could spend more time to change the angle a little bit. Just play with that shift and that rotate. And there we go. And of course from here you still are able to uh, do some editing. If you select the curve you can take this. You can make it longer and you can do all of the necessary edits scale in the X to squish it and then once you're satisfied with that you can then go ahead and apply your modifiers all right so hopefully that helps with creating the coiled um, wire or rope or whatever and adding a texture from substance painter